welcome back to Forza Horizon 5. Today, we're gonna do another Forza Horizon 5 tutorial. Last time, you may have seen me build this thing, our GMC Jimmy. I showed you guys how to make wheelie builds in this game, and I had so much fun with that. Today, I wanted to do another tutorial. This time, how to drift in Forza Horizon 5. In today's video, I'm gonna show you the basics of how to drift in Forza Horizon 5. Everything from choosing the right car, to upgrading your car, tuning your vehicle, all of the assists that I run and that I think you should run, and then also just how to get sideways. I'm actually gonna break today's video up into different chapters, so if you already know what vehicle you wanna drift but don't know what upgrades to use, you can skip to that part in the video down below. If today's video does help you start drifting, consider subscribing for more Forza Horizon 5 tutorials, and also drop a like so other people know you enjoy. Step one of how to drift in Forza Horizon 5 is obviously to pick the car itself. Now, there are a couple of things you're gonna wanna pay attention to. Number one, if you look down into the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see this vehicle, the Jeep Trail Cap, is all wheel drive and the engine is in the front. That's not really an ideal setup for drifting. You can definitely do it, but if you are just starting out, you probably want to avoid that. You're also gonna want to avoid things like this, the Koenigsegg Jesko. It's rear wheel drive, but the engine's in the middle. Again, you can totally drift it, but probably not the best to learn with. If you are just starting out, you're gonna want to find something like this, the Mercedes AMG Hammer. The engine is in the front and all the power goes to the back. It's rear wheel drive. Some of my personal favorite cars to learn drifting with are some of these, the older Nissans from the 90s and the early 2000s. This is one of my favorites in the entire game, the Nissan Silvia S15. Honestly though, don't worry too much about trying to pick the perfect car. So much of drifting is down to personal preference, and like I said, you can really drift anything. If you are just starting out though, front engine, rear wheel drive. Anyways though, once you've got your car, you're gonna want to back out of that screen and head into the upgrade and tuning menu and into your custom upgrades. This is where you can upgrade your vehicle to be an actual drift car. Now, I like to work on my cars backwards, actually. I always start off with the conversion swaps and more specifically the engine swaps because this will kind of dictate what happens with the rest of your build. For example, if none of the engines you have can build a lot of horsepower, you might want to run super skinny tires so you can spin them up easily. And the opposite's also true. If you have a bunch of horsepower on your car, you're probably gonna want some fat tires so you can get some grip. For this Nissan S15 though, we've got a bunch of different engines. This is an RB26 out of a Nissan Skyline. This is a 2JZ out of a Toyota Supra. And this is a V8 out of pretty much everything. However, what you'll realize very quickly about drifting is it's all down to personal preference. Some guys might only want to run the 2JZ, for example. Some might only want to run the V8, and some people might only want to run the 4-rotor. You can literally do anything and get really good results. My tip, though, if you are just starting out, you're going to want to look for engines like this V8, where the horsepower rating and the torque rating are very similar. That's going to make your vehicle very predictable while you're actually drifting, so for the purposes of this video, we're gonna chuck the V8 into this. I'm sorry, hardcore JDM fans. Anyways, after that, we can come to our drivetrain swap. We're already rear-wheel drive, so we don't need to touch that. We then can come to our aspiration conversion. Here's where you can swap on some twin turbos or a supercharger. Again, you can run whatever you want in here. However, turbos will actually have turbo lag. You can see that in the torque graph at the bottom of the screen, as opposed to a supercharger, which is more flat, which again is gonna make it more consistent while drifting. So I'm going to toss the supercharger in. Once you're done that, you can back out of that menu and head over to this, the arrow and appearance. None of these options are going to matter for your vehicle, so feel free to chuck on anything you want. I decided to toss on this really cool top secret body kit onto our car with this really cool big rear wing. I think it looks pretty good. Like I said though, toss on whatever you want. It doesn't matter. This, however, matters a lot. Your tires and rims. New for Forza Horizon 5 is the Drift Tire Compound. To make life simple, we're gonna chuck that onto our vehicle because those tires are designed to go sideways. If you start to get into the try-hard area, you're probably gonna want to investigate drag tires. After that, we'll jump over to our tire width. Your tire width is also very important. Like I said, it's gonna affect how much grip your vehicle has. I'll usually tend to bump this up a couple of notches. I'm gonna go up to 235 for the front. And let's go 255 for the rear. Your tire width is really dependent on your horsepower. If you want to run a lot of horsepower, 
chuck some thicker tires on your car. Once you're done that, chuck whatever wheels you want on and some engine spacers to make your car look good. Once you've done all of that, head over to your drivetrain and in here, we're gonna mess around with our gearbox. We're gonna upgrade our clutch to a race clutch. That's gonna allow us to shift gears faster. This is your transmission itself. In here, we're gonna toss in a race transmission. You can totally toss in like a seven speed, eight speed, nine speed, whatever you want. I like keeping it simple, simple six speed. We're also gonna upgrade the drive shaft itself. That saves 15 pounds of the overall weight of the vehicle. And then we're also gonna toss on a drift differential. All of this stuff is going to be important when we're tuning the car. After that, we'll come over to our performance and handling, and this is where you're going to toss on some really important things for drifting. Number one, you're going to want some race brakes. That's just going to give you better bite going into some of your corners. I like tossing that on all of my vehicles. And then you'll come to this, your springs and your dampeners. You're going to want some drift suspension for your vehicle. You're going to notice that's going to lower your car down right away. It's going to tilt the wheel in. That's going to allow you to drift a little bit easier. And it's also going to give your car more steering angle to hold bigger drifts. So make sure you toss on drift suspension. You're also going to want to toss on some front anti-roll bars and some rear anti-roll bars. We'll come back to those in a moment. And then finally, some race weight reduction. You don't need that, but I just like to do it for my cars. Make them a little bit lighter, makes them more manageable when you're drifting. And then last but not least, you'll come to your engine customization. This is where you can toss in as much or as little horsepower as you want. Everybody's going to want something different here. I personally like to run really high horsepower drift cars. You'll notice that in most of my videos, I'm usually running like a thousand, maybe even a thousand five hundred horsepower. It really depends on what I'm doing, what roads I'm driving on. For this though, I'm going to keep it fairly simple. Let's run 600, 700. That's going to be a good place to learn with. There we go. After we toss on a race exhaust and race camshafts, we're at 700 horsepower. So there are all of our upgrades. We weigh 2,300 pounds, we have more than 700 horsepower, and we are so set up for drifting. So there you go. Again though, so much about upgrading your vehicle is down to personal preference. You can really mess around with a bunch of stuff in there. Just remember the important things like drift suspension, for example. Anyways, once we've done that, we're not even going to mess around with any tuning. We're going to head out into the open world and I'm going to show you what assists I'm running. So these are all of the assists that I run for every single video you guys see here on the channel. You don't need to match these exactly, but there are going to be some important things that you are going to want to be aware of. For example, your steering. I would recommend having it on standard instead of simulation. Simulation, you'll definitely get more points with. However, it's going to make your vehicle very snappy. If you are just starting out, chuck it on standard. The other thing you're going to want is traction control and stability control turned off. That's going to allow your wheels to spin. And then you're shifting on manual or manual with clutch. Again, if you're just starting out, I would recommend manual. All the other stuff is kind of up to you. But again, so much of this is built in with personal preference. The more you start drifting, the more you'll learn what you like and what you don't like. And that'll affect what assists you run. Anyways, once you've got all your assists onto your vehicle, feel free to come out, start up your vehicle and start drifting. As simple as that. Congratulations, you've already made a drift car. Choosing the right upgrades is the most important part about building a drift car. You don't need any fancy tune to go drifting or anything special like that. After you've got the right assist and the know-how, you can definitely get sideways. However, I am going to show you how the tuning menu works. However, I'm going to totally oversimplify it because I know this menu can get really, really confusing. Let's start things off with the tire pressure. The tire pressure will actually play a really big impact in getting your car sideways. The higher your tire pressure is, the less grip you'll have. So if you notice your car is getting way too much grip, try tuning the tire pressure up. For me personally, I usually like to run around 28 in the front and 26 in the rear. I'll usually keep my rear lower because those tires are spinning up and getting hotter and getting more tire pressure in. Them. Your gear ratio options are actually super important as well. However, they play a bigger role in where you're drifting and what you're drifting. Since we're just going to be driving around in the open world for right now, I would recommend this. Aim for your third gear to be maxing out around 120 to 140 miles an hour. And to keep things super, super simple, I'm just going to stretch my final drive over to speed a little bit until the graph in the bottom right hand corner gets to around 120. I'm totally oversimplifying this menu, but trust me, give that a go and you'll probably find free roam drifting a little bit easier than it was before. After that, our 
our alignment, probably the most important thing when it comes to drifting. This is what your alignment's gonna look like if you toss the drift suspension on. It's already a really, really good setup. However, there are some things I would change. For example, my rear camber. One thing I've noticed since playing Forza Horizon 5 is the drift cars actually have way more grip than I personally like. And one of the ways I counteract that is by tossing on some more negative camber in the rear. I'll keep my front negative five. However, my rear, I'll turn that down to negative two. The lower the number is, sort of kind of the less grip you'll have. The other thing I like to change in here is my toe angle. Again, I've been noticing a lot of the vehicles to be super grippy in this game, so I'll tune my toe angle towards out. I'll go up to one degree in the front and the rear. That's also gonna make our vehicles more stable and predictable when they're actually sideways. So again, mess around with that. The more out you go, the livelier the car is gonna be. If you are just starting out, run it anywhere from zero to one degree. Front caster, you can leave that at seven degrees. Our anti-roll bars, I'm actually gonna leave bone stock. If you are just starting out drifting, don't really mess around with this too much. It's not really gonna make the biggest difference, so just leave it there. The same thing for your springs in the front and the rear. Not super important. Same thing for your ride height. Not super important. I like to slam my vehicles all the way down, so lower your car as much as possible. This, however, is where I like to spend a lot of my time, in the dampening. The dampening is basically how quickly the shock absorber is going to push back down and how quickly it goes up. Sort of kind. An oversimplified version of understanding what these things do, the stiffer your vehicle is, the less grip it's going to have. The softer it is, the more grip it's going to have and the more predictable it's going to be. You'll oftentimes see Formula Drift cars running super, super soft suspension. That's because the drivers want them to be super predictable. The way I like to run these is making the rear softer than the front. I've just found that to be a better balance for me, but again, feel free to experiment in this menu. After that, your arrow, probably chances are that's going to be locked, so don't worry about it. Your braking, some guys will come in here and mess around with this like crazy toss brake balance all the way to the front or the rear. It depends on what you're doing. For me, I like to leave mine 50-50 and just turn my brake pressure up to 125%. And then last but not least, your differential. This is another super important part about drifting. Your differential basically manages how much your wheels spin. If you take your differential and you tune it all the way to 100%, that's gonna be a welded diff. Essentially, when you're going through the corner, your left wheel and your right wheel are gonna spin the exact same amount, making it more predictable when you're drifting. So what I like to do is tune both of them to 100% and lock up the diff completely. So when one wheel spins, the other wheel spins exactly the same amount and makes it as predictable as possible in the corner. Honestly though, don't worry too much about trying to find the perfect tune for your vehicle. Like I showed before, you can totally drift without messing with any of this stuff. I do encourage you though, try changing one thing in here, driving your vehicle and then feel the difference. If you don't feel a difference, Try changing a little bit more, for example. I'm gonna share this tune if you guys wanna try it out for yourself. I'm gonna call it AR12 Drift. Feel free to check that out on the storefront. So now that we've done all of that tuning, you're gonna find your vehicle feels a little bit different to the way it did before. Long story short, you're hopefully gonna make your life drifting a little bit easier than it was before. And don't be afraid to change things on your vehicle. For example, if I was coming in here and noticing the rear end, wasn't stepping out as much as I would want it to, I would pause my game, come over to the tuning menu, and change the tire pressure a little bit. Just as an example. Anyways though, once you've got the car that can drift, you might be wondering, how do I actually drift? Like, what should I actually be doing with the controller? Well, that's why I've got this overlay on the screen. I'm gonna show you a couple of exercises that you can try starting off super easy and getting a little bit harder. Start off over here at the festival drag strip, chuck your car up into third gear, and then gun it. You'll notice it's gonna be quite slow off the line, but we're starting in third gear, so you don't need to mess around with your gear. Once you start picking up some speed, you're gonna to wanna to start transferring the weight in your car, essentially leading the car on the left and the right suspension by turning your vehicle like this. You don't need to mess around with anything else. Once you feel comfortable with that, just kind of let it go a little bit, let it go. And then you can start doing this just back and forth down the straight, catching your car left and right. This first exercise is just gonna teach you how to counter steer and balance the throttle. That's all I'm doing. I'm not messing with the gears. I'm not braking. I'm... 
But you will have to break if cars decide to cut you off. That's basically all I'm doing is just balancing the throttle with the steering. You can see my front wheels as I turn. Don't be afraid to spin out though. If you give it too much gas, you'll definitely spin out. If you are spinning out like that, try giving it a little bit less gas. Once you feel comfortable driving back and forth down the drag strip, try messing around with your handbrake. You do that by pressing the A button and you'll notice that'll stop my rear wheels from spinning. That's what the, that's what the handbrake does. What the handbrake does for drifting though is it can help you start sliding into corners and extend your corners a little bit further. Try experimenting with the handbrake, just starting tapping it. Once you feel more comfortable tapping it, then you can start holding it into the corner and extending your lines a little bit, for example. Anyways though, once you feel comfortable drifting back and forth down the drag strip, I want you to set a waypoint all the way over here. This is gonna be lesson number two, kind of. What we're gonna do with this is actually use it as a braking line to show us where we should start drifting. So when you see this, that's when you can rip your handbrake into the corner and get your car to start going sideways, just like that. If you're just starting out, you should definitely be using the braking line as kind of a guide of when you should be starting the drifts. Sometimes you'll want to start them a little bit earlier. Sometimes you'll want to start them later. It kind of depends on the corner, but it's a good guide. So come over to this corner and try to start initiating the drift into the corner. I'm going to show you what I'm doing at any given point. So, so let me talk you through what I'm doing at every single point of this drift. So already you'll notice I'm in the left-hand lane as we're about to take a left-hand drift. What that's going to allow me to do as we go into here is transfer the weight. That's what I'm doing right there by turning to the right. That's putting the weight on those left shots. Then there's nothing crazy happening, nothing crazy. And now I'm starting to turn to the left. You can see my wheels very, very slight is turning to the left. So I've transferred the weight over to that side and now I'm swinging it back out to the right hand side of the vehicle and as I'm doing that I'm also pressing the handbrake you can see my rear wheels lock up there that's gonna start me sliding and at the same time again I'm already turning the opposite way at this point you'll notice that my wheels are actually pointed straight at the apex you always want your wheels pointed basically where you're going so now we're just feathering the throttle the same way we were before and also balancing our steering with that so as we're aiming for the corner still balancing still balancing the way I actually stopped the drift was letting off on the gas and then transferring the weight the opposite direction you can see again what I'm doing I'm steering towards that next apex like I was gonna take it for another drift and seriously That's it for the basics of drifting if you can master that stuff Congratulations, you can officially drift in this game and get your car sideways after that You can start focusing on your transition so you can go around left and right hand corners Once you've mastered 90 degree corners like that definitely come out to some tighter corners like this one here This one will actually have you do very similar stuff to set up the drift but you're gonna have to be on the throttle a little bit less to take that corner as it's a little bit sharper. That's really all it is at the end of the day. It's just the balance of your car and the throttle. And a lot of experimenting. Like I said, so much of drifting is down to personal preference. You're definitely gonna wanna mess around with different upgrades on your car. Try a car that has a thousand horsepower. Try a car that only has 300 horsepower, see what the difference is. And then long story short, put some hours into learning how to get sideways. Keep doing it over and over, you will spin out, you will crash into a whole bunch of stuff. But keep doing it, keep learning, and eventually you'll be able to put your car sideways like it's nothing. Hopefully today's video helped you out start drifting in Forza Horizon 5. If it did, consider subscribing here to the channel. I'm going to be making a ton more tutorials on this game, so be on the lookout for those. If there is anything you want to see in Forza Horizon 5, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll do my best to make it happen. Thanks so much for watching. Good luck drifting. I'll see you guys soon with some more Forza Horizon 5 gameplay. I'll see you then. Bye!